So good day sir, good day ko kadet. So today we're going to report or discuss our topic. So first, we have the course. So we are not, we have a uh, MTech 102, the enhancement for maritime course. Period, we are now on the semi-final period. Week, week 1, session. This is session 1. And the topic that we're going to discuss is all about the manual radar plotting. So we are the group 1. And the members are namely, so yours truly, I'm the cadet about religion. Together with my colleague, the cadet Abaho Carl James, the cadet Abali Paul Janley, and the cadet Tangkai George Neven. So, for the course outcome. So, manual plotting techniques giving information from the radar observations. So, for the learning outcome. So, at the end of this lesson or session, the student should be able to, number one, is to comprehend the history of marine navigation radar. Second, is to determine why radar is such a valuable tool. And lastly, is to recognize the different ship parameters. So, for the importance of the topic. So, the student should be able to perform the manual plotting techniques from the given information from the radar observations. But, before we going to discuss its history, or we go goes on, so we must know or define what is manual plotting or plotting. So, manual plotting is a process of keeping the track of the position of the vessel over the time. So, this is done by recording by the successive positions of the vessel in the nautical chart. The position can be obtained by the dead reckoning or by taking bearings from the prominent chart landmarks and constructing lines of position. So, let's move to the history. So, the history. New technologies of radar became available to the merchant shipping with the end of hostilities in the year 1945. So, radar on merchant ships was initially installed for commercial purposes like on ferries to it is to maintain the better schedules in fog and for large fishing vessels and also the radar was treated with the great suspicion by the mariners so with improving of the technology and other some time the use of radar for the safety purposes was recognized so misinterpretation of radar information is not resulted in any reduction of the number of serious collisions at sea so the international conference of the safety of life at sea or the solas in the year 1960 revised the international regulation or preventing collision at sea or the call reg by adding rules to take account of the use of the radar and recommendations on the use of radar information as an aid to navigation in order to avoid the collisions at sea. So, the International Conference on the Safety of Life at Sea in the year 1974 adopted the provisions by the SOLAS Convention making the radar as a mandatory carriage requirement for merchant vessels or merchant ships in a phase program starting in the year 1980 which finally completed in the year 2002. So, I will give the floor to to my colleague to discuss the ship parameters and other topic. So according to SOLAS requirements, all ships of 300 gross tonnage and above and all passenger vessels shall be fitted with a 9 gigahertz radar and an electronic plotting aid, while all ships of 500 gross tonnage and above shall be fitted with an automatic tracking aid to plot the range and bearing of other targets. IMO adopted these performance standards for marine radars which are used in connection or integration with other navigational equipment required to carry on board ship such as an automatic target tracking aid, ARPA, AIS, ECDIS, GNSS, and many others. So for non-SOLAS ships, many small craft also carry radar voluntarily as manufacturers have produced cost-effective designs for their needs. So what exactly is a non-SOLAS ship and how, it, and how it is different from a SOLAS ship? So a SOLAS ship as defined in Maritime Rule Part 21 is any ship to which the International Convention for the Safety of Life at Sea applies. Namely, a passenger ship engaged on an international voyage or a non-passenger ship 
of 500 tons cross tonnage or more engage on international voyage. While non-solos ships are essentially all commercial vessels that don't fit within the definition of a solos ship, although there are some exceptions. Non-solos ships are subject to Maritime Rule Part 19 and Maritime Rule Part 44. These rules apply to restricted limit ships, fishing ships, and ships of less than 45 meters that go beyond restricted limits but are not solas ships. For the ship's master's point of view, the radar remains and will always remain the primary system for collision avoidance because it monitors the range and range rate of other vessels and obstacles. It also warns the officer on watch when it perceives that a dangerous situation is developing. And also, the radar is a very important tool for navigation. So why is radar such a valuable tool? So the master and watch keepers have confidence in information radar provides because its operation is ship-based, it's not reliant on third-party sources, it has a proven track record, it can be used with sorts when engaged in search and rescue, and most importantly, it is useful when navigating with a, with a restricted visibility or during the night. In short, in its display, the radar offers the watchkeepers the basic reality of all targets relative to the ship, whether it has a good or restricted visibility, which therefore aids the watchkeepers and helps in decision making for both navigating and collision avoidance. Collision avoidance. Early action is required to avoid a close quarters situation. Therefore, early identification of closing targets is essential. Watchkeeping officers need to be competent in the use of radar and are trained in its use and application of ARPA or automatic radar plotting aid. As we say ARPA, are essentially utilized to improve the standard of collision avoidance at sea. Some IMO requirements. IMO stands for International Maritime Organization is a specialized agency of the United Nations that is responsible for measures to improve the safety and security of international shipping and to prevent marine pollution from ships. Maximum emergency stopping distance from full speed of the ship should not be more than 15 ships length. Emergency turn radius of the ship should not be more than that 2.5 ships length. Ships parameters Speed up to 25 knots Length largest container ship 335 meters Capsize bulker 300 meters Panamax 220 to 230 meters Emergency stopping distance 3.3 kilometers to 5 kilometers or 1.8 nautical miles to 2.7 nautical miles Emergency turning radius 550 meters to 840 meters or 0.3 nautical mile to 0.45 nautical mile displacement weights 100,000 tons to 250 tons so thank you Kokadet so next for the practical requirements um, to start plotting targets and determining their course and speed when the target is between 8 and 10 nautical miles off radar Radar gives accurate information and distance from charted features and assists in maintaining the ship's course. Radar also will normally show a 60 meter high landmass at a range of 20 miles. This is considered by seafarers as a minimum requirement. So next I will be discussing the discrimination of targets from a watchkeeper's perfect perspective. So first, to be able to distinguish a tug from its uh, toe at sea at 12 miles range and approaching a rig, a rig on a supply vessel to clearly identify the standby boat from the rig at 6 miles range and to be able to distinguish the motor, uh, the anchor uh, pennant boys of a uh, semi-submersible rig at 3 mile range. Next, according to resolution MSC 19279 uh, for the range, the radar system should be, should be capable of displaying two points target on the same bearing 
separated by 40 meter in uh, 40 miles in range as two distinct objects. So, so for the for the bearing, uh, the radar system should be capable of displaying two joints uh, targets on the same range, separated by 2.5 degrees in bearing as two distinct objects. Radar also greatly assists navigation during poor visibility. Uh, pilots rely on radar at close range in reduced visibility to pass buoys and beacons. Uh, also, according to resolution MS MSC 19279, for the minimum range, uh, paragraph 5.4.1, with own ship at zero speed, an antenna height of 15 meter above the sea level and in calm conditions. The navigational buoy in Table 2 should be detect detected at a minimum horizontal range of 40 meters from the antenna position and up to a range of 1 nautical mile without changing the setting of control functions other than the range scale selector. So next I will be tackling the different uh, some engineering terms. So according to resolution IETUR M.1313 uh, for power, the example is 30 to 70 kilo, kilowatts kilowatts for the power and for the horizontal uh, beam width 0 0.75 to 4 degrees so it is in degrees and for the pulse width uh, 0 0.03 to 1.2 microseconds so for the pulse width is microseconds is the term so for the PRF 400 to 375 hertz so for the PRF is hertz is the term for the noise, noise figure uh, 3 to 8 decibels that is for the noise figure it is uh, called as decibels so so next for the uh, antennae or for the antenna uh, setting of antenna the pitch is 3 degrees uh, the roll is 25 degrees the yo is 5 degrees and the uh, vertical beam width is to 20 to 30 degrees next uh, this photo uh, these pictures that are shown uh, are the different kinds or types of radar uh, despite of their differences in terms of looks and physical appearance uh, they have uh, similar goals they have similar uh, functions that is to give uh, convenience and to provide um, provide safety to provide um, uh, informations upon uh, navigating in sea and to give uh, navigators uh, safety uh, voyage and also and also to give reliable informations upon uh, handling a vessel in the mid of the sea that's all thank you